This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Beth Gall, and I am the Candidate Relations Specialist for the Society of Actuaries. My role at the SOA is divided between managing the actuarial diversity and career encouragement initiatives and developing Candidate Connect events and outreach efforts. That's why I'm so excited about today's video, virtual inter interviewing and internships. So when I meet candidates at our event, there's almost always a conversation with them about how to find an entry level actuarial job. Um, we'll talk about resumes, we'll talk about negotiating salaries, and with COVID-19 upsetting the current job market and internship calendars, those questions are even more important in the current environment. That's why I am pleased I have two experts joining me today. Both are recruiters with Ezra Penland Actuarial Recruitment based in Chicago, Illinois. Elizabeth Owen has been a recruiter with Ezra Penland Actuarial Recruitment for just over a year and holds a bachelor and master's degree from Northwestern University. She is passionate about inclusivity and career de development in the actuarial profession and believes strongly in advocating for the best interests of both the candidates and companies with whom she works. Lauren Scalzo has a long history of hiring experience in various industries and has been a recruiter with Ezra Penland for almost six years. She's detail-oriented and thoughtful in her work and enjoys forming long-term relationships with her candidates and clients while striving to find the best mutual fit for all involved. Thank you so much for joining me today, Elizabeth and Lauren. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So let's dive right in. So unemployment is at an all-time high and many companies have their employees working from home, just like we are. Um, as many business professionals move from to working from home and to virtual meetings, uh, parts of the hiring process are also moving online. So what have you seen in the current environment? Lauren, let's start with you. Great. So we have definitely seen that companies have shifted on online. So they are moving any in-person interviews now over to video interviews for the most part. We also saw that at the beginning of all of this with all the uncertainty that companies were sort of taking a little bit longer in order to move through the processes and in some cases put roles on hold briefly while they sort of figured out how to shift their own employees over to a work from home situation. That has since gotten much better and companies are getting the hang of it now with the video interviews. So things are moving along much better now than they were at the beginning of all of this. And how about you, Elizabeth? How are things changing in the hiring process? Um, what we're seeing now is uh, an industry illustration of adaptability and resilience. The world hasn't stopped turning. Companies still need actuaries. It's just the logistics of the hiring process that has changed. Um, as Lauren said, everything has moved online. A video interview, if not several, is a veritable guarantee at this point. Um, the pacing of the process may feel different as well. It's important to remember that these processes will be new for both the candidate and the potential employer. So have patience, be flexible, and know that both parties are working towards the same end goal. So when a candidate is entering the job market for the first time, what do they need to know about virtual interviewing? Lauren? Yeah, so I definitely think that there are some ways in which a candidate might feel more comfortable being able to interview virtually from their home. They don't have to worry about getting to the office on time and bringing all the materials with them they might need, and they might just feel more comfortable in a familiar environment. On the flip side, they may have to give a little more forethought to certain aspects of the interview, specifically the technical aspects will likely be a new venture for a lot of people. So figuring that out ahead of time and preparing for that appropriately on top of just preparing for the actual content of the interview as they normally would is definitely a consideration. Great. Um, so how can a candidate stand out in a virtual interview? Elizabeth? 
Um, yeah, as Lauren said, the standard interview rules still apply. Uh, be knowledgeable about the company and enthusiastic about the opportunity. Have specific questions prepared to ask. Dress the part and, of course, be yourself. Uh, specific to virtual interviews, proper lighting and camera placement will definitely help make a good impression. Make sure your camera is around eye level with you and that the top of your head uh, roughly to your shoulders are in the frame. Uh, your light source should always be in front of you as being backlit will cast your face in shadow and make it difficult to see your features. As tempting as it may be, avoid the Zoom backgrounds. Instead, sit in front of a plain wall or with a clean, simple setting behind you. Remember, you want the interviewer's attention to remain on you, so avoid anything in the background that may pull focus. Rid yourself of distractions as well. Find a quiet environment, silence your phone, and do your best to sit still and not fidget with your hair or clothing. Um, and most importantly, always be sure to set this up well in advance in case adjustments need to be made. Great. So do you have any other tips on maximizing the interview process, um, whether virtually or eventually when everybody's back in person, Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Uh, the best tip that I've heard pertaining to interviewing during and eventually after COVID is to be prepared to talk about what you're doing during all this extra time indoors and be prepared to do so in a professional capacity, whether it's learning a new skill, delving into a hobby or volunteering. Uh, an anecdote that demonstrates personal or professional development, particularly during this period of high stress, is going to reflect well on a candidate. Great. So let's shift the focus just a little bit. Um, virtual internships, that's a topic that's coming up a lot more often. Um, what do you say candidates and students should expect if they're offered a virtual internship? Lauren, let's start with you. Yeah, so similar to what Elizabeth was saying earlier about it being a new experience for all parties with shifting things over virtually, this especially I think applies to virtual internships. It's very new to everyone, but I think candidates can expect that there will be a larger emphasis placed on short-term projects and more frequent check-ins. And if an intern is lucky enough to have a mentor, that person will probably be taking a larger and more hands-on role than they would have previously. I also would say that candidates will be well served if they take a more proactive approach on a day-to-day -day basis. They might have to take a little more initiative and I think a good idea might be to set up with your supervisor on the first day expectations in terms of how frequently they would like you to check in and any timelines they would like you to abide by. That way the intern is not left feeling floating out there and feeling as though they are interrupting their supervisor each time they want to reach out to ask a question or just check in with them. But I'm so glad you think oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to add that I think that regardless of the fact that the candidate is working from home, that they should still show up with the same intention and energy each day and interest in their work and still try to check in with their supervisor and be an active participant as much as possible. That's great. So I was just going to say, I'm glad you brought up mentors. I'm glad you brought up supervisors because the networking opportunities that a student really receives during an internship can be important to their career. Um, so what do you recommend students do to make those same connections during a virtual internship? Uh, Elizabeth? Um, look for opportunities to connect with other interns in your program. Uh, some companies already have this in place, but if your company doesn't offer these, take the initiative to try to get interns together for a virtual happy hour or a group discussion. Um, some companies are moving in-person internal events online such as team names or weekly fireside chats with senior leadership. You take part in these as often as possible as well. Like Lauren said, proactive communication and participation will be key. Wonderful. What do you think employers are looking for in an actuarial candidate? What specific skills or traits do they trend towards? Lauren, what have you been seeing? Yeah, so this will have subtle differences based on the company, of course, but most employers are looking for entry-level candidates 
who and internship candidates who have some exam progress potentially also a strong gpa and some sort of demonstration of their technical skills exam progress though of, of those things is certainly very important to focus on. And on the soft skill side of things, uh, I know that employers are looking for candidates who have strong communication skills, a positive attitude, a sense of intellectual curiosity, and an interest that they can display and explain about the company itself and the work it's doing. So not just wanting a job, but wanting this job with this company is important to display. That's great. So finally, uh, with COVID-19 placing so much stress on the employment market, how do you see the future of the profession changing? Um, are there any opportunities you see coming out of this for actuaries? Elizabeth, let's start with you. Um, the demand for actuaries has always outweighed the supply. Uh, that has held true even through the most recent economic downturns in 2001 and 2008, which is really important to remember right now. Uh, in terms of new opportunities, we've already been seeing a movement towards the inclusion of data science and analytics into the actuarial skill set. Specific to COVID, the UK government has issued a call to arms for actuaries with advanced large scale dynamic modeling experience. And I expect that that trend will continue in both the public and private sectors. I think we're also going to see a need for innovation and non-traditional approaches to otherwise traditional lines of business. And because COVID-19 is affecting every aspect of society, I expect this will lead to greater cross-disciplinary collaboration amongst actuaries. Thank you. Lauren, how about you? What do you think? Yes, definitely would echo everything that Elizabeth just said. And we are already seeing that some new insurance products are starting to come out of all of this. But I, as things are still uncertain, certain, I do think new possibilities might arise at the same time. So it seems as though, given that most companies have now shifted to everyone working remotely, that that has proven to now be an efficient capability that companies have. So I would hope and anticipate that companies might be a little more open to this going forward. And on the personal side of things, I think that this is all sort of allowing or perhaps forcing in some instances employees to be a little more thoughtful and direct in their communications. So more frequent and more direct communication is something that is being sort of nurtured throughout this process of everyone trying to figure out how to work in their own homes, but together at the same time. Right. Yeah. Great. So I think that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, but thanks so much to Ezra Penland for joining me. And thanks to our viewers for watching. I want to remind everyone that the SOA does offer a free resume review service that can be accessed via our job center, which is jobs.soa.org. Please also consider subscribing to the SOA YouTube channel for future updates like this. And as always, submit any questions that you might have to candidate at soa.org. We may feature your question on a future video. So thanks again to Lauren and Elizabeth and everyone, so please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.